greetings, greetings to the viewers and to the bots out there. Uh, I'm Coco and this is the Athenaeum. Today I'd like to discuss an often overlooked gem when it comes to modern sci-fi. Um, it's a book that I, ha I've, I haven't seen any reviews on YouTube and I don't know why. It's really good. That book is Aftermath by LeVar Burton. It's uh, it's quite the page turner. Uh, I I read it I read it a few years ago, um, and I read it again last week. I finished it in like two days, and, and I'm I'm talking about only reading it like at night, and in the morning. So like maybe like four hours in all reading it. it it's a real page turner. Um, so let's let's read the blurb. Eighty two thousand to twenty nineteen. The first African-American president-elect is assassinated. A massive earthquake levels the Midwest. Economic and social fabric collapses in a second civil war. The government dissolves, leaving a continent of homeless refugees and armed militias. This is the aftermath. So here's the title. Here's the uh, book cover. The back. Big, big young picture of Mr. Burton. And yeah, let's get to it. All right, so first let's discuss this world that Mr. Burton built. Uh, it's the, it, it starts off in the early 2000s, um, and, it's, and, it's, and it basically begins before 9-11, because the book was written in about 19, in, the, in the late 90s. So 9-11 uh, hasn't happened, um, and everything that came at Patriot Act and all that didn't happen. So we're in a different world. We're in a whole different timeline. Uh, Burton, he predicted a black president, and he was only off by one term. President Obama was elected in 2008, and Lawrence Everett was elected in 2012. He predicted that, but, what, but with a little difference, though. He predicted that the first black president was going to be an African-American, not a... Uh, African slash white biracial, and and that's a that's an important um, distinction um, because President Obama his life was a little bit different than what a Black American's life would be, and and so his policy President Obama's policies became significantly different uh, from what Mr. Everett's policies were. And we'll, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll get right into that and we'll get right into that. So let's discuss the timeline uh, in Aftermath. In 2009, America launches a space station, its own space station, um, and, stop, and stops using the International Space Station. Um, and the economy is starting, to get, is starting to get bad in the United States, which is another thing that... Uh, parallels very well with uh, that parallels really well with real life. The economy gets bad, America launches a space station and then the United States stops providing financial assistance to other countries in, in, in the world. Um, and so as this is going on, because America isn't providing uh, all of the financial support that, that these countries are used to, a lot of wars start breaking out. Little, you know, little skirmishes here and there, and America is basically taking a hands-off approach to the rest of the world. Uh, in 2010, uh, Mr. Everett comes on the scene, and he's he's like blackety black. Like he 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 understands racism. He understands how black people have been oppressed in this country for so long, and he's here to deal with it. No soft shoeing, none of that. He, he's a black American from Ohio who's outspoken about racial equality. And he's also outspoken about big businesses, uh, stranglehold on the U.S. government. Two very big distinctions uh, from President Obama. So 2010, he comes on the scene. He starts his campaigning. 2012 comes and he's elected. He wins the election. And, you know, it's shocking to the nation because just like President Obama's election was shocking, nobody thought he was going to win. And, you know, anybody who remembers that time, remembers all the comedians, everybody was saying if a black person ever wins, he's going to get um, he's going to get 
he's going to get assassinated immediately. And that's because everybody understood that anybody coming to power in America who who wants to say things like, you know, black people need to get treated right. We need to we need to fix our historical wrongs against black people. The rest of the country is not going to appreciate that. And so we the people thought President Obama, or at least black people, thought President Obama was going to come saying the same thing that Mr. Everett was saying. Um, and that he was going to get elected, or he was going to get assassinated. That obviously didn't happen. Mr. Lawrence, though, he's he's elected and he's assassinated after only four days. Not even in office. He was president-elect for four days, so it's still November. He won the election, that was November 19th, is it? And November 23rd, he's assassinated. It was a chemical attack by a white extremist group whose catchphrase is, get this, Keep America pure. That's the that's the group's catchphrase. And pure, according to Mr. Burton, uh, means white. So uh, their goal was to keep America pure and white. So after Mr. Everett is assassinated, uprisings just immediately go across the across the country, and and obviously that's going to happen. Like, no, I'm sure nobody in that story was surprised. So uprisings in New York, L.A., um, you know, all of the big cities happen. And the U.S. government sends the National Guard to quell the uprisings. So for a full year after the election and assassination of Mr. Everett, there's, there's obviously riots and uprisings all around the country. Um, and by the mid to end of 2013, there's a massive earthquake the likes of which America hasn't seen uh, before. A massive earthquake in the Midwest in cities like St. Louis and um, cities like uh, Kansas City, I guess, and Chicago. These cities are devastated. Thousands, tens of thousands immediately dead and millions made homeless. So you have the uprisings from the assassination of Mr. Everett. And then you, now you have just millions of homeless people shocked and destitute after the earthquakes. And because of the bad economic times, the United States doesn't send, um, they, doesn't, they, they don't send a National Guard immediately to help. So those homeless get added to the rioters and it, it gets really bad in the Midwest. Um, eventually now the government does send the National Guard to quell and what happens is the minority, as Mr. Burton puts it, the minority troops refru refuse to attack their people. They refuse to attack their people. And this is the start of my mental tics. Like, I, I had a couple mental, like, like, like just tics a little bit. It, you know, it wasn't, too, it wasn't too jarring, but there were tics. Um, and, that, and that's because mainly in the Midwest, cities like Louisiana... Uh, not Louisiana, cities like St. Louis, it's mostly white Americans and black Americans. You don't have a lot of other groups there. You don't have a lot of Mexicans. You don't have a lot of, you know, uh, East Asians. You just have black Americans and white Americans. And Mr. Burton says the minority troops refuse to attack their people. And I don't see that happening in, re in, in reality. I see the black troops refusing, but I, I have a hard time believing that, that, they would, that, that they wouldn't crack heads if they, if they were told to by their superiors. Um, it would only be the black people, the black Americans, uh, doing that. So that was a, l a little mental tick. And things like that caused me mental ticks throughout the story. But, you know, I suspended all of that and, and read it because I, I, it's still a really good story. Um, so that's happening in 2013. By 2014, more troops are called for the Midwest uprisings. But the U.S. is virtually bankrupt. So, you know, they're not able to pay the troops. They're not able to pay to get them shipped out there. And so while the Midwest is calling for more troops, the U.S. government isn't able to do it. And because these sustained rebellions going on, plus the earthquake, plus the global ec economy, the stock market tanks, sending the world into a new Great Depression. Now, let's remember, in 2009, uh, the U.S. sent a space station up, and they sent 60 of the best scientists with them. 60 to, you know, 
60 or more of the best scientists out there and they're looking down on the earth and they're looking down on the uh on the um they're looking down on what's going on in the planet particularly in the u.s and a fight breaks out on the station between the scientists so you have uprisings earthquakes you have global skirmishes and then you got a fight on the space station which is something that everybody has been really happy about that was at, that was at least one thing that people could look up to the sky and say at least we're you know we're in space we're doing things um and so the fight breaks out and they're not able to get the fight together and then a, and then for some reason a fire breaks out on stage and everybody on earth is watching in disbelief um the fire breaks out and because you're on the space station with some concentrated oxygen because it, you know you, you have to make the oxygen and put it in there the fire spreads really fast and kills everybody on, on the on the space station horrifies the earth nasa's disbanded and humans ain't going into space anytime soon after that like I, I, after that the human taste for space flight um is diminished and before i go on this is all like in the first page uh first 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 page first two or three pages mr burton he, he has like a timeline just to set up his story by 2015 the military is in the streets of america trying to keep the peace people the minority troops in the military are refusing orders that they don't think that they should be following and it's looking like a race war is about to break out like a real legit race war is about to break out and the top black general wyatt dixon he attempts to stop that by by taking control of the military of the army and he fails at that and the military splits with the white military on one side and the minority military on the other side and uh with that the country the country subsequently falls into the second civil war and this goes on for four years until 2019 and uh millions die millions are displaced famine breaks out you have um you know people roaming the streets doing horrible things to each other killing you know it's it's, it's horrible um disease spreads because the, you know the, the network of doctors aren't here and then see the cdc ain't around no more and with that all the countries that the u.s used to support and be the backbone of they all collapse all of the u.s all of the countries around the world that were allies to the u.s and being supported by the u.s collapse um and then riots start popping up all around the world like it's it's it's, it's quite the dystopia and by 2019, by late 2019, the race war ends and people of color control most of the country. Um, and, the, and, and, the, and the states are mostly autonomous. And by then the country is, is a complete mess. It's a complete mess. Um, and that's where the book starts. So when the book starts, we're, in, we're introduced to four characters, uh, Leon Kane, Renee Reynolds, Amy Ledoux and Jacob Firecloud, um, and Leon. Leon is an atmospheric scientist who worked for NASA. He's also an artist, um, and he's a son of blue collar workers from Pennsylvania. Um, and he, uh, you know, he's at this point he's lost everything. He's homeless. He's living on the streets of Atlanta, just trying to get along. Um, you know he's he, he he doesn't join in with all of the looting and, and damaging and all of that because he you know he has morals um and he's you know he he just wants to keep to himself and lament in all of the things that he lost in the previous world um renee reynolds is a doctor she's an inventor she's a saleswoman she's very confident uh, uh, and, and she's been working on this miracle technology called the neuro enhancer for many years um it's the neural enhancer is supposed to be a tool that will heal people like he it, what it does is it enhances your brain to be able to supercharge your your immune system your healing response all that it's supposed to do that 
Um, and she, you know, she's had some, she's had some successes in it, not, but but because of the state of the country and the world, there's no funding. So what she's so what she tries to do is get people to buy into her device, so she can maybe start to heal people. Um, one of the major problems with this world is that the wars that was going on and the lack of oversight, lack of regulation, has caused a major ozone uh, damage in the United States. So uh, cancer is rampant among uh, white Americans for the most part. Cancer is rampant, but also other diseases are rampant. But cancer is the major thing killing. And the neural enhancer, she says, will be able to deal with it. Um, so she's going around trying to sell it to people. Uh, Amy Ledoux is a young Amy Ledoux is a young white girl who lost everything during the earthquake back in 2019. She's about 10 years old. So she was about three when the earthquake happens. And she doesn't remember her parents. She doesn't remember life before the earthquake. Um, and she's just running around St. Louis as a little homeless girl. She calls herself a river rat. She runs, she goes from shelter to shelter, you know, eating and sleeping and getting whatever she can. Um, she is smart, though, because she's able to avoid death. She's able to avoid starvation, able to avoid rape, which is rampant in this world. Um, and she's probably pretty lucky, too. Um, and last, we have Jacob Firecloud, an elder uh, Lakota medicine man who lives in South Dakota. He is um, he's racing against time now because he, according to his religion, the earthquake was just the first earthquake that his spirits sent because humans aren't getting along. So now he knows another earthquake is coming really soon if he's not able to get the four races of man to, uh, to, to be able to live in peace. So his, you, you know, he, he's very scared that the, that the final shake is going to come and destroy the world if he's not able to convince humanity to live in peace. And there's, and the, the book flips between these four characters. I think LeVar Burton did a really good job um, voicing these characters and making them, um, making them significantly different. Some examples is um, when Leon is talking, he's very introspective and he's very like he feels sorry for himself. He doesn't want to do anything. He often goes back into memories of his family who he lost in a fire. Um, Renee Reynolds, she's a very confident woman who, she, you know, she knows she's a woman in a dangerous world. So she's often thinking about the dangers around her. But she doesn't let them stop her from doing what she needs to do. Amy, she's a little, she's a, she's basically a, a baby still because she was, you know, she was a baby and she's been homeless her whole life. Um, she's a baby, but she also has some maturity. Uh, one time, she she brings back a memory of one of her friends, not one of her friends, but 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 another young girl who the older children would punch the little girl and say, oh, I don't want to be punched like her. And, um, you know, or, you know, there's a scene where there's a man chasing her and she thinks the man might rape her if he catches her. So she's saying, oh, no, I don't want... She doesn't really know what rape is and what sex is, but she's heard rumors from the other children and she, you know, the little girl she that was getting bullied, the other little girl that she doesn't want to be like who's getting bullied got raped by older children and she was quote unquote bleeding from her bottom. She's running, oh, I don't want to bleed from my bottom. I don't want to. It, you know, it's, it's really immature the way she, the, the, the way the writing is. And it's great because it's a little girl. In Jacob Firecloud, he talks, he talks kind of slow and he's always in the, in, he's also always thinking about his spirits and, you know, the importance of the white buffalo woman. Um, and uh, it, it's just very different. You never get confused with who you're reading about. And that's been a problem that I've seen in other sci-fi uh, stories, that, that sometimes all of the characters are a little flat, and you never know who you're talking, who you're talking to, who you're reading, but that, that doesn't happen here. So the four voices are written very well. You know, the story goes, they're going on their adventure. I don't want, I don't want to really reveal too much of what's going on in the story, because it, it's great. Um, but, uh, you know, the pacing, I love the pacing. I loved, you know, 
it, it things didn't go too fast or too slow. There was never a dull moment. Even when there were, there wasn't much going on. It was still wonderful to read the scenery. Uh, you know, because it, it took place in 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 it took place in the west, in the south, and in the Midwest. And, and and you know, it was visually different. All of the cities were visually different, and and and, and I really liked how Mr. Burton uh, wrote that. You you felt danger for a lot of the characters at different times. There were many surprises. There were many surprises, many twists that you didn't expect. They were never cheesy, um, and the, and and the book, the book wasn't too gory. There were some gory parts that, but but they were necessary for the story. Um, you know, the characters, the characters are very lifelike, very lifelike. You know, they're also very lucky. There was a lot of lucky scenes. There was a lot of you know, especially for Amy Ledoux in the beginning. Um, the, now, there was an issue I had towards the end, and this happens with a lot of sci-fi books that I've that, that I've learned. A, a lot of times, the the sci-fi artists they build they build a whole world, and they get to the end, and they're just not able to to get out. They're not able to end the story properly. Kind of, kind of you, you're kind of left feeling um, you, you're left feeling uh, unfinished. With, with, with an unfinished story and that, and that kind of happened here the ending it, it closed you know the, the book was over but i felt like the last maybe five chapters could have been a whole nother book um it, it kind of just it ended too quick it ended too quick um when I, as i was reading and i noticed that the, that the pages were ending there was like only a few pages i'm like how are they gonna how are they gonna wrap this up so you know that was my only issue with the story is that the ending could have been it, it should have been longer it should have been another hundred pages the last the last uh, ten pages the last twenty pages should have been another hundred um, or even another book and even still after it's over you're wondering how are they going to um, how are they going to fix America. You know, because, you know, we're, we're still in uh, dystopian post-race war America. And it's going to take a lot to uh, get this stuff together. Okay, so that was my only issue with the, with the writing of the story. Um, and the discussion of a, of a race war with people of color versus white people, I don't see that as reality. I don't... I don't I couldn't see a story where people of color, i.e. Mexicans, Chinese, you know, Central, uh, the other Central Americans, the other non-black people around the world banding together with black Americans against the white Americans. I don't I don't see that happening. In reality, I think what, what would happen is um, it would be black people alone versus all of those groups. In, in such a race war, um, but you know it was a fiction. It was a it, 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 it was a sci-fi, and so I, I suspended that disbelief and able to in, in order to enjoy it, and I did. I I think that I would give this book a seven black peace signs out of ten. It's definitely a book that should be read. It's it's it, it's. It's definitely a book that should be read, and I would love to see more reviews about this book from, you know, from other people who have different points of view than me, because I know my point of view is really unique, you know. I would love to see other people, what, what they thought of this book, what they liked and what they didn't like. Um, so if y'all, if, if anybody wants to um, do a review, I, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. So yeah. That was Aftermath by LeVar Burton. Check this book out. You can get it on Amazon. It's, you know, get it used. It's, it's super cheap. I don't know why. It's, 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 a, great, it's a great modern sci-fi. Yep. All right. Well, thanks for checking me out. Like, subscribe, all them good things. Comments. Comments are welcome. Discussions are welcome. That's what I made this channel for. Um, so yeah, y'all enjoy the rest of this week and the rest of this summer. Peace.